Good morning, Zodiac, and welcome to Soul Family Reads. Collect a brief for whoever resonates with spirituality, manifestation, love, and relationship. Here with the Soul Family Read, I try to focus more on ourselves. And I kind of read myself into this, so I feel like I'm a part of it. Um, that's why I say my soul family, so I know there's 8 billion people on the planet. <laughs> So I know there's got to be a few out there that are part of my soul family that are connected to me spiritually. Because I think we are, you know, whether we meet or uh, um, all of our, probably everyone of any significance is a soulmate, right? That's uh, mucho. So I want to talk today because it's the full moon on the 4th of November. This collective read for whoever resonates. Um, reading from the Gilded Tarot, a little booklet that comes with my classic gilded tarot see if you can really focus on that if you want to screenshot it so I'm going to read from that and then I'm going to use the ethereal visions illuminated tarot deck and um, um, I haven't really shuffled or anything I just put them away um, but I meditated this morning before we started and got the idea to do this moon so read about the moon it's short and then we'll find the moon in this deck and we'll see what's on either side of it and we'll do a past present and future and we know the present is the moon so let's talk about what that is and here think the moon conjunct the sun which is the new moon right now in scorpio at 12 degrees on exactly my venus natal venus within minutes <laughs> exact so um this beautiful orb inspires us like no other it speaks to our soul. It releases our animal instincts, like the dogs howling. It invites the crayfish to surface. This alien creature represents our deepest fears. Uh, mark myself there. Um, this is, I said, like, um, you know, uh, we're going to go deep in um, goodbye comfort zone. And this could be right now uh, dealing with some of our deepest fears about uh, intimacy uh, so the light of the moon allows us to glimpse it but provides enough shadow that we can ignore it if we're careful that's significant about the moon card in general as I like to say the light of the moon allows us to glimpse it but provides just enough shadow that we can ignore it if we're careful Ah, it's about just subtly not seeing something, something subtle, something emotional. That's the moon, often kind of how, how it means to me. Uh, it's this reading, it's going to be about ourselves, within ourselves, around love and relationships. Um, and it's going to be deep, that Scorpio, shadow stuff. Very well could be the fears. And I used to say, it was like a joke, it was like, go inside and find the darkest, scariest place and go, go there. And then go there and find the darkest and scariest door that everything screams. Whatever you do, David, don't open that fucking door. And open that door. And that's the way out. <laughs> if we're careful. The moon goddess heightens our intuition. She does show us our worst nightmares. But then again, she gives us our very best dreams as well. New Moon is about intentions because it's about really connecting the mom and dad, male, female, yin, yang, masculine, feminine, divine energies, all are together here. So this is the time uh, when we're whole and grounded uh, most. The message of the moon is as shadowy as the moonlight, moonlit night itself. Pay attention to your dreams and your intuition. Face your fears, even if you do, so a little at a time. Just attend to your soul. Be aware of not seeing clearly, of being afraid of shadows, the shadow self, or of being led astray by shadowy images that aren't what they seem. By shadowy images that aren't what they seem, our, our own projections onto other people, we get led away because we get like obsessed. Scorpio is obsession. Uh huh. Pluto. So, put this back. Thank you, Spirit. Thank you, Gilded Tarot. <laughs> uh, whoever wrote that. Uh -huh. 
Now, we'll go to the illuminated visions tarot deck, just like using them. Just like it says, it's not big, it's illuminated. Okay, so now I just want to go through and find the moon card, which is uh, not always so easy, but we'll see. It's here. Mm -hmm. The moon, and it's, uh, what is it they say? The journey. Yeah, three of wands. There's my card. Temperance, five of wands, four of swords. Let's see here, the tower. Come on, the moon's going to be right here. Uh -huh. Swords, a bunch of swords here. No, 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 where's my moon? Where's my moon? It's my favorite. I guess God say is my favorite card in this deck. The uh, King of Cups. It's a Jim Morrison King of Cups. Come on, looks like Jim Morrison, man. You know? Uh, come on, where's the moon? Oh my God! This could be like a magic trick, and then I reach behind my ear and pull the moon card out. It's not, not gonna be like that. <laughs> okay. So we find it most of the way through the deck. So we had the moon, and then in the past position, I had the queen of pentacles. Yeah, I'm gonna do the reversals, okay. So now we'll flip this, uh, to the reversal, we have the ace of wands. So now we have ourselves a reading, you know, took a minute to get there, and we've been talking about what does this moon mean. So maybe we can narrow that down in our own lives, because of me, it's 12 degrees Scorpio. Venus, I mean, kapow, um, you know, it's everything about that, and uh, with astrology, I'm an astrologer, it's very important with transits to realize that you're not just reading a, a static map, you're reading a human being, and the map is not the ground, so what it's actually doing is the transit energy is uh, in affecting the natal energy, what the person is made of the natal energy in their life, you know, they could be 20, they could be 60, and they made different things of that energy and when a transit hits it it's going to activate not this static uh, theory that's on a, a piece of paper but the energy of their life they have say they have in their natal god help them saturn square mars well that's meant to be resolved so however they resolve that then when transits hit saturn and mars they're going to trigger as they've made it in their life as what they've done with that you know, they may have become very strong and and cautious and uh, successful in that way. Memento. Coffee is, is I just got to have coffee. Thank you. So, Queen of Pentacles, this is the past position. Um, and I'm going to go with the moon here is really, this is the Scorpio thing. It's probably something we don't want to deal with. It's shadowy stuff. There's something we just don't see because it's so subtle. This kind of thing, I'll tell you, a real shortcut here. If you have a good spiritual friend, a good friend that knows you, that you trust, um, you know, a lot of times they'll cut right through this. Cut right through this. You just, you're not going to see it. It's like hidden. It's like uh, in some weird, you know, uh, you know, point when you're driving and you just can't see it in the rearview mirror some invisible zone there um, but we're coming in with very solid energy with the queen of pentacles and you know i feel that way i mean uh, i might still be on the ground but i feel solid you know i feel grounded um and this is basically being okay you know take care of yourself you know to function um there's a certain peace that comes with this this two birds telling you i feel it welcome by the way to the urban jungle of Cancun, Mexico, David Sky Studio. <laughs> Do check out the Soul Family Read too. Uh, go back and see if you connect. You know, if you connect with this especially, um, and you know, because uh, whatever themes I'm doing with these, not really. I'd say it's a daily reading, but it's an unfolding uh, reading of my own energy in a way, uh, and I know that it's shared with a certain percentage of people. And that's what we're looking for. Uh, to kind of uh, cinch up there. I tell you, in terms of listening to tarot readings, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus, I, I'm a Cancer um, Moon, which is very strong in me. And But Sag, you got four planets in Sag, and it's very strong. Um, and Virgo Rising, and I'm telling you, I listened at first to everything, and it was always Sag for me. 
but it doesn't have to be I think at first you should listen to different stuff and I got a feeling as an astrologer that when you see like I have Pluto opposite the moon right now uh, so probably uh, cancer is gonna start relating to me a lot more because uh, my moon is like really kind of heightened and really challenged uh, right now I also God help it not to feel sorry for me but <laughs> Scorpio progressed moon two degrees just boom just hit recently and I knew it was coming and it's gonna be right there during this whole opposition already have the opposite to the moon now it's when Pluto goes direct and moves the mines at 27 cancer so you know I look at that for me that's the last mother humper transit for a while I could get past that that's coming so I feel pretty solid you know this feeling pretty solid I gotta think about what does this mean for me it's very hard to see Huh. I think at the deepest level for me, this is like not wanting to believe. Um, there's like this hard skeptic part of me, and I just realized, I'll tell you, I just realized where it came from. Not This is just realizing where it's coming from. Maybe this will help me. Uh, but I, my mom was New Age before there was New Age. When I was so little that I, I could just, I don't know how little I was, five or six, she sit me on the side of the bed. She's trying to explain the astral world to me. This is like a radio station, honey. You know how when you turn the dial and there's static and you're listening to music and it goes away? and you But then you find another station and you listen to that. And I'm like, yeah. And she said, well, the station you were listening to a minute ago, it's still there. It's just you're not tuned into it. Do you understand that? I'm like, kind of barely, but I'm like, yeah. You know, I get that. And she said, well, that's the astral world, honey. And I'm like, what? And she could see that I don't get it. So she's digging, she's trying, she knows I have this a little electric train set, you know, I love. And she said, what's well, like a train? She said, in the astral world, there could be a train station coming right through here, your bedroom, honey. And I mean, I left that bed, Sagittarius, child, and I think one foot hit the floor between the bed and like the doorway to the living room or whatever. And I mean, I was out, it was like, pshh. And she come running behind me screaming, no, 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 it's not a real train. You're not, you're not in any danger, honey. You're not in any danger. And I'm just thinking like, I'm feeling it. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> so uh, uh, the thing about my mom's abandonment issues tied in there and stuff. And um, I associated new age and she wasn't very much into esoteric. She's all into astrology and I wish I wasn't, even until she died in 97, I wasn't into astrology. I was always a little bit, you know, but not not really seriously. Um, so I kind of tied it into that divine feminine energy, my own intuition, anything spiritual. And I was an atheist until I was 47 when I took a massive dose of mushrooms and cracked uh, my head open and left my body. And it was great. Um, so it changed my life. Um, but that's what it is. It's like that whole, this whole new age, the whole, you know, maybe it's an old phrase now. I don't know, man. It's like the light workers, impasse, spiritual people, energy workers, um, star children, crystal children. I mean, the energy of soulmates and twin flames and life partners. Yay, life partners. Go life partners. Now, this is the most auspicious thing about this whole reading. This is the future position, Ace of Wands. I feel like this Ace of Wands is going to be, once we get through this Scorpio and go deep and uh, deal with this right here, which I told you for me what I think it is. It's pretty personal. I mean, I don't know how to get personal than that, but this is how these things are going to go. This is not playing around energy. This is not like... I don't know, you know, mom wouldn't cut the edges off my toast energy. It's going to be deeper than that. And we all got that somewhere, somehow going on. We got that Scorpio inner chart. It's at 12 degrees. We just got to look there. Uh, if you need an astrologer, do let me know. Um, 
I feel like if you look at this too, it's a little bit like they're giving flowers. It's a little softer than your normal like Ace of Wands, which is really a phallus, simply. A lot of passion, a uh, lot of energy. I mean, you could say base chakra energy, solar plexus chakra energy down there. Down there. Uh, really firing up. And I feel like I feel like for me it's going to be really being able to give myself fully to my lover and in every way you know um and because this is very emotional energy so i think all of that stuff with you know mom and the, it it becomes like a part like the whole divine feminine the whole receptive the whole psychic the whole eighth house world of, of the unknown um that i kind of want to shut down to it at some level but I've been aware of this for a while um, and opening myself more and more and it's exactly to the divine feminine um, but I feel like this is to a masculine surge of energy male female doesn't matter what is that it's going to be energy it's going to be healing it's going to be activity it's going to be confidence it's going to be romance possibly if you want it you know and passion for something passion for something is what that is it's like this little bit of, I just got to finishing work, going down into the basement one last time. I'm thinking of that man with Bernie Sanders, and he's like, you know, diving deep for more shadow work. Damn it, man, it never ends. <laughs> and uh, I think that's what it is. We're diving deep for that shadow work, finishing it up so that when we come out of that, and we go into, come on, let's be real, we get through with Scorpio, what comes next? Sagittarius, bitches. And I think it's going to fire up in Sagittarius season. You know, uh, I, my, I have a link to my Facebook. So had a little short article up today about uh, how, you know, I think uh, in Sagittarius with Mars, it's like, you know that scene from Breaking Bad where he, Walt, like, kills all of the kingpins at the same time. Even some one guy's in prison, you know. Everybody's like, holy shit, who's this madman that is capable of killing all seven of the greatest kingpins, you know, uh, at the same time? Um, I think that's kind of what we're doing. And uh, Mars was in Libra gathering information about everyone and making the list. And now it's in Scorpio. And uh, also we're having another conjunction of Mercury and Mars here in Scorpio coming up next week. And, um, you know, they're... Uh, finalizing the plans and it's kind of like that I'm not saying anybody's gonna be killed it's kind of like it is kind of like you know who's in and who's out you realize you only got so much energy um, and getting kind of uh, mercenary about um, and mercenary and, and, and uh, realistic really about our life like energy um, and that's what Mars is going to be doing it's going to be starting to really carve the way take action take action this is Mars making those hits, you know, um, deciding who's in, deciding who's out, deciding where to go, and then going there, you know, taking the helm of the ship and steering the ship, you know, saying, here's where we're going. This is us. This is our ego. Nothing wrong with it. This is our ego in alignment with our greatest good, you know, and us finally taking action, you know, moving forward in that Mars way, which is, you know, brave and bold, because it's going to take brave and bold. Everybody watching this, you know, you ain't open in a coffee stand, I'm guessing. <laughs> Parrots. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Anywhere you can think to share this, please do share it. Use all the help I could get here. What channel hit a thousand? Getting there. Uh, we can start doing these live and uh, figure that out. But I think it'll be a lot more fun live. Love the place here. Um, it just has a great feeling. Um, and do check out the... Uh, Today, singles reads for Libra and Scorpio, um, always on Thursdays. Uh, thank you, guys. And the couples read.